Okay, that was good. Um, our next speaker is again long term friend of the Radical Independence Campaign um, and Director of Common Meals, Robin McAlpine. I always feel these days like I'm going to be a wee bit of a misery, um, so apologies, but now is the time to be miserable because we've got to get the misery sorted out and, and clarified before we go into the next thing. So let me just start with this. I'm, I feel personally much less certain about what just happened than, than a, a little bit of the conversation from the other speakers there just now. And that's because we don't know what just happened. The more that I run a think tank in Scotland, the more I become aware of the fact that Scotland is a data desert. And we are inferring and guessing an awful lot from a base of evidence and information which does not sustain the guesses that we're making. So let me give you an example. Um, yes, people have moved both ways. So it looks like very roughly 15% of people said they've changed their vote since the last referendum but only 3% has shifted in that same tracker poll towards independence. That implies we gained nine, we lost six. Why? Well, I've got my guesses. Bet you've got your guesses. I don't know if any of them are true. I have no idea for certain why those people shifted. One of the things which I want to emphasize with my day job hat on, so my career was as a political strategist, is what people see and what people think are not the same thing. So very often, if you're asked, and this is why, for example, the, the question about um, did people see Scottish independence as being narrow and inward looking? Well, my argument would be that people who really hated the idea of Scottish independence described it as narrow and inward looking. It doesn't mean that they formed their opinion, um, their vote, because that was their opinion. I'm suggesting that they had their vote and they described that vote using that opinion. Um, I have a guess that we will have lost as many people over the oil crisis, the wobbles over the economy, as we have over Brexit. I suspect we may have lost a little bit of Brexit vote. Um, I, again, I am a bit more sceptical than Joan is about just how strongly EU Scotland is. Uh, I spoke to an awful lot of people who were Remain, but they weren't, they weren't really enthusiastic. They just liked Boris Johnston less. And that is, I think, a thing which um, I, don't see, I don't see the EU as the biggest issue in Scotland right now. It is an issue. But I'm not convinced that that is the one that's driving everything. So what just happened? I'd really like to find out. I would really like to know. I would like to see an awful lot more data on who's doing what and why they're doing it so that we can understand. I am a little bamboozled by this constant idea that it's middle class was the category. Have you looked at the data at the older, people who are older, people who weren't born in Scotland? And one which I don't think is discussed enough, um, the gender gap. My opinion from what I've seen is that the gender gap was bigger than the class gap. The age gap was definitely bigger than the class gap. We need to talk about these things a lot more. We need to work out more accurately what exactly was going on. Now, I'm not going to, I, I'm going to try and be very short today because I, um, I guess we want to leave some proper time for q and I wrote a book on what I think we need to do and what I think went wrong, and I don't want to repeat that all here just now. Uh, go buy one. <laughs> I, team's happy, I've just did the plug. Um, but I think that what we have to do, the crucial thing at the moment is to not slow down, but to focus. So and just, this is a point I want to make. Um, people have been talking about, well, maybe now independence is in the back burner because the polls didn't quite move and things didn't quite shape. And you know, senior people are briefing that stuff. I want to emphasize that's completely the wrong metaphor. Um, I'm all for long games and short games. And some games are long games and some games are short games. But the thing that I want to emphasize more than anything is that they're called a long game and a short game, not an early game and a late game. They both kick off at the same time. So we can't sit here saying it's a slightly longer game so we'll forget about it. We need to find a mechanism and a means to explore and discuss these questions. And at the moment, I feel that discussion is not involving sufficient people. I think it's too narrow and it's, and it's, and it's 
too enclosed inside a political structure. And I don't think that's helpful for anyone. Better decisions are going to be made if we can broaden out this discussion and find answers to these questions, not on the pages of newspapers. This is not, for my money, a campaigning phase. This is a planning phase. And post uh, Brexit, what I think we need to do is try and assemble a mechanism for a wide range of people who've got different experiences and expertise to bring to this to get round a table and to start to discuss what just happened. Because until we understand, and I'm talking about the last two years, we haven't sat round in a table and done an autopsy in 2014 yet. Once again, if I talk to three people in a row, um, none of them give me exactly the same reason for why we lost in 2014. Now, that's good if we can distill it down into something that we find is a coherent analysis. It's not good if we're all knocking a door with our own version of the recent past and our own strategies. So can I emphasize that while the, the many voices of the independence campaign was great, um, we can't have 5,000 different strategies all being enacted in Scotland in one go. So I'd like to see us not slow down, but focus. We established the Scottish Independence Convention again as a multilateral means of people talking. I think we need to take that seriously. We've got a big conference on the 14th of January. I think we need to take that seriously and get together. Because if we cannot work out what's going on, we're not going to have the right response. Um, one slight disagreement with um, the panel as well, but this is only slight. Um, Quebec is not the law of gravity, right? So C Quebec gave up after two, but we've got that whole Robert the Bruce tradition thing. Try again. <laughs> um, I would emphasize that um, we don't have to assume that a second referendum is the end of it. So if we had a second referendum and five years later, 75% of the Scottish population wanted independence, we can have another one. But it does get harder and harder. <laughs> It does get harder and harder, and that's the last thing that I wanted to talk about, is not what just happened, but what do we want to happen next? And here, again, I'd like us to focus our Brexit heads on the bigger picture. So I don't think we're getting a referendum before the end of Brexit, so that's what I think we have to live with. I don't think there's any chance the UK will give us it. If, they're falling, if, if their relationship with Europe's falling apart, they don't want to disintegrate internally at the same time, and they've got very good excuses for not giving us a referendum. That's what I think we have to work with. So what do we think we want to happen? Now, this is a strange thing, which again, we've not discussed. Um, but I see most people think it'll, it'll be brilliant if Brexit's a disaster. That'll really push people in our direction. And I say, yeah, because that's what we want. We want the precedent that the breakup of an economic union is painful, catastrophic, terrible, and to be avoided at all costs. I don't get that. I don't see that. I think we're waking up every morning and saying what we think, without really thinking it through, what we think might be a good thing. Actually, what I think we need to focus on is how we make the most of Brexit and accept a little bit more that this is going to happen. What powers do we get here? If we focus on what powers we repatriate from, not from Brussels to Westminster, Br Brussels to Holyrood, then when we don't get those, because I don't think we're going to get much out of Brexit, when we don't get those, we are creating another context which is helpful. But at the same time, I think that we should be hoping for a comparatively smooth transition. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe um, it will be better if we have uh, calamities and catas uh, catastrophes. Maybe that will help us, but I can't understand how. So this is my view. Um, anyone who doesn't know that I still believe that we have a comfortable inbuilt majority in the hearts of the people of Scotland for independence, um, well, I do. I, I think that's firmly there. I think we have 65% of the population want to believe Scotland can be an independent country. I think we've got to stop guessing how it is that they want us to present that to them. And I think we need to get together, work on it better, and get moving. Timescales are phenomenally tight here. I am concerned if this drifts into the mid-20s. Um, I've heard some people saying maybe, maybe the mid-20s before we're really in a position. My God, that's too far away. Too many bad things could happen between now and then. Um, I think that's too far away. I think the next two years is infeasible. I think the next five years is the game. 
and you have no idea, well you probably do actually, how short a period of time that is. We are not ready. We're not going to be ready if we sit around guessing on the chat rooms and the forums. Do they still have chat rooms? Am I just getting old? Um, on the social media, um, if we're just sitting about there, guessing all of these things individually in serial, and marching forward without really calibrating ourselves to what's really going on, we could screw this up. I am desperate that we don't. We must think, we must talk, we must measure, we must learn, we must develop strategy, we must develop infrastructure, we must develop a plan and we must do it soon. Because if we don't, we're gonna wake up one morning and say, where was all that Brexit vote? We just somehow in our heads thought was gonna come flooding in because it didn't. We've got to do this soon. I'm really, really clear that we must be in control of this not responding, and we're not going to do that until we get round a table and talk about it. Go. Uh, thanks.